folks, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Photoshop Elements video tutorial. Today we're talking to you, as I'm sure the title always gives it away, about RAW 9.2. Now what is Camera Raw? Camera Raw is that setting that you put your camera on where you're capturing all of the background, all of the colors, and the full content of the photograph. When we do this, it allows us to do... Uh, more detailed editing on that photo. Not that capturing your photos in JPEG is bad, but RAW just gives you that more creative touch. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead to the computer here. So what we're looking at here is some pictures I recently uh, took of a, a car, uh, of my, uh, my friend's car, his uh, 57 Chevy, as you can tell. And we're going to take this picture and we're going to do some uh, editing to it. So I'm going to right click on it. I'm in the Photoshop Elements Organizer. I'm going to right click on it. We're going to go to Edit with Photoshop Elements Editor. When we do this, it's going to open up in what is known as Camera Raw. So let's go ahead and highlight this a little bit and pull it up here. I'll do that for you. So Camera Raw allows us to take this photograph and we can actually change a lot of the settings that you would change in camera, such as uh, white balance, color temperature, tint, the exposure, the contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. We can add some clarity, some vibrance, and some saturation. You can also do a couple other things that I really don't mess with a whole lot, and that's change the depth. You can see at the bottom here it says 8 bits channel. We can change that to 16, but I always leave it on 8 bits. We could do some basic stuff up here, but I don't really recommend a whole lot of that because you can do this stuff in the editor, uh, like move the picture around. You can, you know, move the picture around inside here. Uh, you can do use a color picker. Maybe you want to pick a certain color. Uh, you can crop it. You can uh, do some straightening in case you have to straighten the photo out left or right a little bit. Uh, remove red eye. You can definitely do that in here. And we can rotate the picture clockwise. Uh, we can open the preferences dialog, and you can see there's some preferences in here. We're not going to really be concerned about those right now. What we're going to talk about here, though, is look at the top. You can see that I am not lying to you. Camera Raw 9.2 recently came out from Adobe. So if you didn't upgrade your elements and you shoot in Camera Raw, I recommend you click the Update button. Uh, it's under the Help menu and update your, um, your Photoshop elements or your Photoshop. Uh, so if you're using Photoshop, you can also download the new Camera Raw. We're going to go back here, go off of here, go back to just the uh, magnifying glass. And the first thing I want to show you is um, up here at the top, we have the histogram. Now the histogram, you can see, be it good or bad, I, I must have got really lucky there with the light and everything that uh, I shot this picture under. Because the histogram is neither dark or not light on the other side. So there's... There's no total going to one side or the other, and that's good. You want your histogram to be kind of centered. Uh, you want your colors to be together to make sure you have all the color correction uh, properly set on your camera, and that's showing that it's a pretty good picture, but we're going to play around with it anyway. You can see here the ISO setting, the f-stop. So the f-stop was 5.6. The shutter speed was 1 2 50th of a second. The ISO setting was at 100, so it gives me a lot of information. And it gives me my uh, my lens setting. I was using my 17 by 25 at 22 millimeters. Down here, we have the basic settings. We have the detail settings. So we can do some detail stuff. We'll look at that in depth. And then we got camera calibration. We're not going to worry about the camera calibration because that can be a whole nother entire topic. Let's go to the basic settings. Now, in your basic settings, the first thing you're going to find is white balance. And I recommend you play around with this because a lot of times when you shoot this stuff and you play with the white balance, what you're going to find is you're going to find out that sometimes a, a white balance you wouldn't suspect would be a good white balance um, may be the one you're looking for. So this is as shot, and I admit it, I shot it on automatic. We can change these to all these different white balances. If you shoot this in JPEG 1, you're not going to have the camera raw. We've talked about this in the past. Oh, I showed you camera raw. Maybe it was 8. 9 or 9.0 or whenever uh, we, we talked about camera raw some time ago 
if you shoot in JPEG, it's very hard to get the camera raw editor open. And I don't even know why you'd want to, because you can do all this editing. Uh, you would do a lot of it in the Photoshop Elements editor anyway. So we're going to try daylight first. And you can see the, the way the picture will change here. Next, we'll try cloudy, shade, tungsten lighting. I noticed that was when I was getting ready for this tutorial, I noticed tungsten lighting turned it really, really blue because tungsten lighting in its own nature is a cool light. So it's making it more of that cool side. And we'll talk about that in a second. Fluorescent lighting. Uh, fluorescent lighting always gives it that orangey type tone. <clears throat> uh, a flash. So you can see flash would brighten everything up. And you could do a custom. So custom is when you're setting your own temperature and your balance is down here. Not to say... Not to say that you can't do a daylight and still adjust these balances. Now, what we're talking about here, so if we go to custom, I'm going to show you. So temperature, if we go to the cool setting to the left, the cool setting is signified always with the blue tint. The blue tint is a cooler setting. Look at the histogram, how it flattened that out because we made it real cool. And now, on the opposite spectrum of that, if you make it real bright, Real bright is going to spread your histogram out left to right. And you can see it gives it that real harsh red tone because uh, when you're making something hot, it makes sense. It makes it, it's heat, it's hot, it's red. Uh, and you can see that we're at 50,000 on the temperature. And you can just lower this down. So blue, so we're going to just bring it up here until you find something. I like to adjust this so you're looking at the car as well as the clouds in the background. Uh, the green in the front ground, in, in the foreground, the front ground. And uh, you want to adjust that so everything looks pretty sharp in there and pretty good looking. You can see it's green, nice red, nice blue sky. Now we can start playing with the tint. You can move the tint back and forth. And that will even give you a little bit more control over the grass. Uh, but watch, you don't want to get the grass too green. Look, we can get the grass really green, but everything else is kind of green with it. So be careful with your tint. Get your tint to come up there a little bit. Your exposure setting is just that, is your overall exposure. We can make it darker, less exposed. We can bring it up, make it super highly exposed. See what I mean? If you double click on this at any time, it will move it back to where it was. So say you get it there and you're like, wow, where was that setting? Double click it and it will make it back to zeros. It'll make it back to neutral. The contrast is the same thing. We can mess with our contrast up and down. If we get it down too long, we're like, wow, we don't like that. Double click it, it's back to zero. Highlighting, we can give it more highlights, less highlights. These are very subtle, and you'll see this if you're watching the clouds at the top here. You'll see the highlights coming up and down. So let's look at the clouds at the very top, and you can see how bright they get. Okay, so you're highlighting the areas up there. I'll put that back. Shadows is you're bringing your shadows up or you're decreasing your shadows. So if there, even if you can't see shadows in your picture, a lot of times you will be able to bring these shadows uh, out. And, and you'll notice them more just by playing with the sliders. The whites is obviously the white. Look at the white on the back of the car. You can bring the whites up. You can see here on the back of the car where that got a lot whiter. You can bring the whites down if you want to make them less uh, prevalent. There we go. We'll drop the whites down. The blacks is the same way. Look at the tires. We can make them super dark and black. Or we can lighten our blacks up just by pulling this over. Now you can see the tires are very light. Clarity. The overall clarity. These are the three settings that I use the most when I'm in camera raw. Clarity will clear up, clarify the picture more and give it that more sharper edge. And you can sharpen these pictures up more. The vibrance. If we move the vibrance up, you can see you can bring the vibrance of your colors out. Look how we can knock the colors out, almost make it a black and white photo, just by playing with your vibrance. Again, paying particular attention to your histogram. And watch when I go to the right. You see how this light lit up over here? That's telling me that we're, we're clipping. The shadows are clipping. That's a warning. Okay, so if we go to the left... I can't get it to clip to the left, but I definitely got it to clip to the right. We don't want it to clip. And then we have saturation. Saturation does exactly what you think. You can desaturate a picture and make it black and white. Or you can oversaturate a picture and you can just bring your colors all to live and in full. A lot of people tend to, believe it or not, and this always throws me for a loop, um, a lot of people would rather slightly desaturate a picture more than 
uh, saturate it. So a lot of people try to take more of the detail of the color out and try to make it more realistic than adding a bunch of color in. So we're going to do that. I'm going to double click this to zero. And then we're going to just take a little bit of the saturation out just to give it that little bit of a, a deeper impact in the picture. And that's why they do that. Now, if we look at the next little slider here, the detail slider, you can play with your sharpening. Sharpening does just that. It sharpens your picture. So we'll just move the sharpening and you can sharpen it. And sharpening is a very much of a, um, of a personal taste. I don't usually sharpen my pictures. Uh, I just feel that they're, you know, you take them, uh, they're pretty good. If you think it needs sharpened, a lot of times portraits need sharpened more than objects. And, and that's been my experience. Uh, the radius, so the radius around the areas can get sharper. And you're, it's really hard to see that detail coming out. Again, if you notice, I double click these. So let me move this up to, it was set on 25. Now, instead of me dragging this slider back, trying to say, well, where is 25? I can't find it. I can double click it and it will go back to what it thinks it should be, 25. Uh, again, the detail is the detail of the picture itself. I could double click, put that back. And then masking. We can mask it out. But these are so, so very um, um, minimal type of edits that you're not really seeing a whole lot of effect on the picture. So I say more really play with it. This part is very important, is noise reduction. Noise reduction is, and I think I did a video on this some time ago, but noise reduction is if you're taking a picture with a very, very high ISO setting. So you take the picture, you have a very high ISO setting, and you come home and it's a little grainy. Well, that's called noise. So in the camera raw editor, if you're shooting raw, it's very, very simple to do your noise reduction. And folks, a lot of these settings when you're shooting camera raw in here are much like the settings that you'll see in Lightroom. So if you're wondering, should I buy Lightroom or should I just buy Photoshop Elements? Um, Lightroom, and I can say I use both. Lightroom is one of those programs that it's a fantastic organizer. It allows me to uh, edit big stacks of uh, photos very, very rapidly. Um, I know when we were shooting a lot of weddings, we would go out, and if you have bad lighting in one, chances are you may have some bad lighting in 20 of those pictures, and you can do them all at one time. So for that, Lightroom is superior. But for, you know, stuff like this for a car picture, you know, and I shot it in RAW, I can come in here. And I do believe in shooting RAW, and I, do, uh, I am one of those guys that, shoot raw most of the time i mean i don't really ever think that i shoot jpeg because it's not that big of a deal to work with raw images anymore so you can just turn your luminance up and down and you will see you're not going to see in here because i don't have any noise uh, the color and color detail now once we get all this work done you're like okay that picture is the way i want it to look i got all the all the settings i want on there we're going to now opening it up into our full editor so just click on open image when we do this, you'll see that it opens up in our Photoshop Elements Editor. Now, of course, this is the quick view. I usually go right over to expert mode, and I'm ready to go to start editing my picture. So, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial on the new Camera Raw 9.2. It works pretty much identical as all the other Camera Raws. I mean, uh, they do a lot of the uh, behind-the-scenes, they call it, or under-the-hood type programming. Uh, that makes it more detailed, that makes it more responsive to your settings. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you subscribe to the videos. If you're not subscribed, please like the videos. Um, if you're looking to learn more, I always want to throw this out there, uh, go to jtclearning.com, jtclearning.com. Right now I have Photoshop Elements 12 and Photoshop Elements 13, up. You can take the course. Uh, it's, it's a very straightforward course. And, um, you know, there's 50, uh, 50 video tutorial lessons all in order. Uh, you know, you start the very part, very first start of Photoshop Elements and work your way down through the edits and learn all the tools. And I think, you know, teaching that way, if I teach you the tools and then you can start applying those tools to however you wish to be creative. So check those out at jtclearning.com. Thank you so much for watching my video tutorial here on YouTube. I appreciate you coming, and I hope you come back the next time for another video tutorial. Take care, and I'll see you then. Bye for now.